Hello and welcome to video number one for section number three. That's right, this is the first video for our final 2D game, which is going to be called Pixel Checkers. So, you are, at this point, no stranger to the Godot engine. I mean, if you followed along with the previous two sections, that means you've already created two fully playable games. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, the, the only reason I say this is because this upcoming project is going to have to move over things a little bit quicker than you might be used to. I guess get your programming hat on, because I'm going to have to skip over explaining certain areas of our code base. I'm, I'm going to get to all the most important stuff, or the stuff that might be most likely to trip you up. But as usual, all the project files will be downloadable. Make sure to ins informative comments whenever things need clarifying. So, with all that in mind, let's discuss our game board. For checkers, we are going to need a board data structure, which we will construct out of nodes. So we could do this with an array or a dictionary, but I prefer to make use of Godot's node system wherever possible. So I'm going to fill out the board script with some functions, I'm going to fill out the board tile with some functions, and basically, this video I'm going to be more or less preparing to actually add the pieces and everything, and we're going to look at the, the final logic in the next video. But with that in mind, let's get started making this board. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? So as always, the first thing that we need to do is create a new 2D scene. And I'm just going to save this in the scenes folder as main, or let's call it game, because that's a nicer name for that. So the next thing that we can do actually is add a board. Now this is a 256 by 256 sprite. I'm going to set it to not be centered. Now, as you may have guessed, this is way smaller than our actual playable area. So, I am going to do some changes. So, you've start up up here. If you go down to display window, you should see these width and height attributes. So, I'm going to set this to 256 by 256. Now, cool, that works. I'm also going to disable resizable. Uh, the issue is that this is going to be a really tiny gameplay window. So, what we can actually do also is go to test width and set this to 512 by 512. Now what this will do is that it'll force it to render at 256 by 256, but the actual window size will be bigger. However, I didn't actually press the right buttons. We have to do mode 2D, aspect ignore I think, or keep, whichever, I don't think it really makes a difference, because the window's not resizable. And here is our board, perfect. So, now, one issue you may realize is that this is a little bit blurry. I don't know if you can see it on your computer screen, so I'm going to click on the actual file in the file system browser. I'm going to go up to import. I'm just going to disable this filter flag because for whatever reason, filter is enabled by default. I don't know how to disable it project-wide. I don't even know if you can, but don't worry. Okay, so this is our board, basically. Um, so that's cool. We can go ahead and add a script to this. So I'm just going to, sure, I'll call it that. Make sure there's no comments, because I don't need comments. And I'm just going to set the class name to board. Now, what is this, you may ask? Well, turns out, uh, you know those nodes like Node2D or Kinematic Body or Sprite? These are all uh, classes, with, and just as easily, we can define our own classes like board. So if we type class name board into this project, we can access this from basically any other script, I think, as far as, as long as it's in the scene. So while we are investigating classes, this means I'm also going to create another script called board tile. I'm going to create a new folder called scripts for this. So I'm just going to name it board tile. I just like to use a, uh, what is this, Pascal case for, um, Class names, I don't know why, just personal preference. So class name board tile. Now I'm going to add some helper functions in here, which at the moment I'm not going to fill in the code, but it's just going to be stuff that I want to keep in mind we need this board tile to have. So let me just do that. Okay, so this is all the stuff that I've put into the, you know, board tile class. So you can see it's just stuff for adding a piece to this tile, or removing a piece from this tile, or getting and setting the position. Nothing that's actually that complicated. I added some code annotations. Everything here is fairly self-explanatory, though. So, no problem. Actually, this should be return position, I think. 
so awesome. Next we have to fill out this board class because we want to actually spawn these tiles on the uh, board class. However, we need a, a, a node to actually represent each tile. So I'm just going to get into prefabs and I am just going to call this, let's say, board tile.tscn. So now I'm just going to name it that way also in the, oops, that is not correct spelling. Add script. I think I'm going to need to load it from here. Perfect. So now this is bound to our board tile. And I'm just going to add, for the sake of clarity, a little tiny good old mascot. Because it's the most helpful thing for debugging. It's so good. If I can actually size it properly. Yeah, okay. So at the moment, as I said, this doesn't do anything because we're not actually adding any of this, these board tiles into the project. But we're going to do that now. So just read my code when it's done. So here is the code, not as much as last time, luckily. Uh, very simple stuff, just iterating through. You know, I set this constant board dimensions to 8 by 8 just to show we want 8 tiles by 8 tiles. Two dimensional for loop, and we're just adding it as a child. So let's just test this out, and voila! We have a bunch of good old people. So let me just put this down to, say, 7 times 1 to see how that affects it. And yes, it's still running as intended. Awesome put that back up to 8x8 eight eight, and I can actually remove this sprite. I'm going to set it invisible because we may need it for some other purpose somewhere later on. And now these tiles are still here but they're not actually present if that makes sense. You, you can't see them. And I can actually test this by using one of those really clever debug features. When you press play you may notice it splits into local and remote in the scene tree. If I click on Remote, it'll take a moment to load the actual scene tree as it's shown here. So there are 64 because, you know, 8 times 8 And you can adjust any of these variables here, and it should update how they look in-game. For instance, if I were to click on this, and I find the visible thing, then I open my game. There you go, one tile has become visible. I can switch this off again. And boom, invisible. This would be a bit easier if I had them side by side, whatever.